are doing section 3.1 and we're learning about functions. Okay, first of all, um, functions are based on relations. In math, a relation is where you relate one set of things to another set of things. Okay, it could be numbers, it could be one list with another list. Doesn't really matter, okay? So a relation is where we have a set of ordered pairs. Usually we use the word ordered pairs when we're talking about x and y values that we are graphing. Set of ordered pairs relating one set of items to another set. Okay, generally the, the first set we call the domain and the second set that we're relating the domain to is called the range. I'll write that down again when we actually get to um, talking about functions. So a function is a relation, so it does relate two sets of things together, but there are some specific rules that make it a function instead of just merely a relation, okay? A function is where each item in the first set, which is called the domain, is associated with only one item in the second set. And the second set we call the range. So that sounds a little bit mathy. It's a little bit hard to understand when it's all technical math stuff, right? So let's relate this more to real life. Sometimes I like to think of a function as a machine. You plug something into the machine and you get something out of the machine. So if you have a machine that creates cans, you you put in metal, liquid metal or whatever, or the machine makes it liquid, and it spits out cans that they can then pack food in, right? Or you have an oven where you put in cookie dough and you get out cookies, right? In terms of numbers, with our math class, we plug something in. Usually we have an equation or a graph or a table of values where we plug a number in and we get a number out. So the number we plug in is always called the domain. The number we get out is always called the range. Okay, so let's just like clarify that a little bit. Domain is the x values, usually when we're dealing with x and y, or the number we plug in. Um, likewise, I meant it to be a singular function x values are the numbers we plug into a function, okay? The range are the numbers we get out of the function. So generally, that is the y values, right? Because the y value depends on what the x value is to begin with. Sometimes we've graphed, I think we've done this already, where we've graphed by plugging in numbers for x and getting out numbers of y. We did that on the test, yeah. right? So plug in numbers for x, get out numbers for y, and I told you to pick any x values you want. But then, does the y value depend on the x value that you choose? Yeah. So the range is the y value, and it's the numbers we get out. OK. Let me give you another example of a function that I like to kind of use as an example sometimes. Let's think about a list of people and their birthdays. Is that going to be a function? If I made a list of everyone in this room along with their birthdays, then I would have an x value, someone's name, and I would look it up, and that would allow me to find the y value, somebody's birthday. Would that birthday be the same no matter what? No. For that person. Yeah. So every time I look up Shelby's name, it's always going to give me the same date for her birthday. Right? Right. Or every 
every time. Um, yeah, now is it possible that there might be two people in this class that have the same birthday? Yeah. Now is that okay? Is that still a function even though two people might have the same birthday? Yes, that's fine. But the fact is someone's birthday cannot change dates all of a sudden on us. We can't list we can't list Josh twice with two different birthdays. That just doesn't work. There's only one. So that one time we look up Josh, we find one birthday, and another time we look up Josh, we find a different birthday. That's not going to happen. So that is a function, okay? So yes, birthday people with their birthdays would be a function. But well, let's think about people and their phone numbers. Would that be a function? No, because I might have somebody's name in the list more than once if they have more than one phone number associated with them. You could have a work number, a home number, a cell phone number. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different options with phone numbers. So Tyson's name might be in the list two or three times, depending on how many phone numbers he has, right? So I might look up Tyson once and get one number and look up Tyson another time and get a different number. Is that a function if I get a different Y value for the same X value? No. 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 Okay. So that one is not a function. Does that make sense? Let's look at some number examples of things that are functions or not functions. So we're kind of playing a game here. Function or not. Doesn't that sound like a good name for a game? Function or not. Yeah, functions for 400. I'll take functions for 400. OK. So one comma four, yes, I'm recording. My recordings are very candid, and it's okay. Is this a function or not? Okay, well, you look at the x values, and you see if there's only a specific y value associated with that one x value. So with the x value one, it is linked to the y value four. The x, x value 2 goes with 5, the y x value 3 goes with y value 6, and x value 4 goes with y value 7. Let's go ahead and name the domain and range. What would the domain be for this function? 1, 2, 3, and 4. What would the range be for this particular function? 4, 5, 6, and 7. And is it a function? Yes. Yeah. yes, it is a function. Okay, let's look at a different problem. Hmm? Oh, good. Yeah, this should be revealed. Okay, so negative 3, 9, negative 2, 4. Now people watching the video are going to wonder why I said good, because they won't have heard you. Because my microphone is right here. But I was just saying I'm glad that she remembers these. <laughs> she is Tasha. Hey! <laughs> You're not working out online anymore. I'm not using last names. <laughs> I'm not using faces. Okay. Let's look at this list. This x value has that y value, this x value has that y value, this x value has that y value, this x value has that y value. I almost wrote this one wrong and messed it up. Wait, what is it? This x value, that's a 3, negative 3. It's not a function. Why not, Zach? Because there's two negative 3. Okay, so this one is not a function. <laughs> because one time we plug in a negative 3, we get 9. And the next time we plug in a negative 3, we get 8. That does not work when it's a function. So if it's not a function, we don't even usually deal with the domain and range. But we could. Do we need to list the domain and range or we get that part? It's pretty easy, right? Yes, question. Um, can you have double ranges? Mm -hmm. Let's do one. So let's just do a quick one. If we had 1, 2, and 2, 3, and person number 3 happens to have the same birthday as person number 2. Is that one okay? So we plugged in the same number, got different numbers. But on this one, we plug in different numbers, get the same number, 
that's okay. So that one is yes, it is a function. I don't know, I'm not dealing with equations right now. Let's look at some equations though, since you asked. Okay, function or not. Y equals three X plus one. Okay, guys. Uh, so it's only if there's a, a duplicate domain? Function or not? Y equals 3x plus 1. Is this going to be a function or not a function? function. Yes, it, it will be a function. Let's talk about the domain and range. What numbers can we plug in for x? We can plug in any number. We can call that all real numbers, or we can write it as negative infinity to positive infinity. You always do the smallest number on the left and the largest number on the right. So negative infinity is considered smallest and positive infinity is considered largest. Okay, let's talk about the range. Now the range is a little bit harder to figure out unless you have the graph, but this one is just a straight line. So we can plug in any x value, and the y value depends on that x value, but still, are we going to be able to get out any y value? Are there any y values we won't get? No, there's not. The range will be all real numbers as well. But you're not going to need to worry about finding that one quite so often as finding this one. Finding domain is a big part of this class. Okay, let's look at another one. How about y equals x squared? Okay, let's, let's try plugging in some numbers and think about this one a little bit. If I plug in a 2, what am I always going to get out? If I plug in a negative 2, what am I always going to get out? If I plug in 0, what am I always going to get out? Is there ever going to be a time when I plug in a number for x and I get two numbers or more for y? Yes, so this one is yes, and what will the domain be again? Domain, again, is all real numbers. This one, because it's a parabola, like I said, the range is easiest to find if you have a graph. And on most of the problems on your assignment, you're not going to need to find range. Okay? So the range is actually going to start at zero and then go to infinity. Good observation. Okay? Because the parabola shape is never going to go down into the negatives in this, this particular one. We're going to learn more about these later, but if you were to graph these points, like we have this point at 0, 0, and we have a point at 2, 4, and we have a point at negative 2, 4, and we start connecting the dots, we figure out that we've got a parabola. We're going to study those in detail later. Not today, but. Okay, how about this one? x squared plus y squared equals 4. Function or not? If I plug in a number for x, I would get a number that I subtract from the 4. And then to find the y value, I would have to do square root with a plus or minus. How many answers does that give me? That would give me, so subtract the x squared, and I would have to do a plus or minus square root to solve that problem. That gives me one x value that I plug in and two y values that I get out. So that one is no. Um, we will, we already, did we already do these? Chapter 2. What is this shape? It is a circle. That one. This shape is a circle. Okay. There's a little thing we're going to talk about next chapter. In fact, this one's a line. Let's just review that really fast. There's a little thing we're going to talk about next section, not next chapter, sorry. That a thing called the vertical line test. I'm not going to write it down right now because we're not doing graphing today, really. Okay, but if I did have a graph of a function and I did the vertical line test, do you guys remember what that means? Yeah. Yeah. What does the vertical line test say? If one if the line, if the line point crosses, if the line crosses the, the graph more than once, it's not. Okay. Yeah, if a vertical line crosses anywhere on the graph more than once, like it would on this circle, cross more than once here and here, then it's not a function. 
but on a parabola and on a line, it's only going to cross, you know, just any vertical lines you put in there will only cross once. Uh, let's go ahead and do domain and range for this, even though it's not a function, but I just want you to get a feel for how to find domain and range. So how would we do domain for this if it was a function? We just look at the graph. What are the numbers that you can use on this problem? Negative 2 to 2. And what would the range be? The range would also be negative 2 to 2. If you tried plugging in a number bigger than 2, so say 3 for example, we would end up with 4 minus 9, which is a negative 5. And what's wrong with taking the square root of a negative 5? Can't do it unless you're working with imaginary numbers, which we're not doing yet. So we just say it's not possible. It's not part of the domain. It's not part of the real number system. So it's not included in graphing, right? OK, so we understand functions or not, right? I'm going to pause the